Um, so welcome everyone. Um, my name is Shana Peterson. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I am an admissions and recruitment specialist with the Office of Admissions at the Brown School at Washington University in St. Louis. Um, so I am so excited to welcome everyone today for our monthly virtual info session. Um, today, we're gonna to be talking about how the Brown School engages with St. Louis and our, um, our local St. Louis community here. So we have a really awesome panel. I'm gonna introduce everyone um, in just a moment, but just to give everyone kind of an overview of how today works. Um, it's gonna be about an hour long. Um, we will start with introductions of our panel. We have staff, current students, and even a Brown School alumni, which is really exciting. Um, and then we'll dive into just kind of a brief review. Um, <laughs> Hi, Barbara. <laughs> um, then we'll do a kind of a brief overview of St. Louis and just a little bit of information about our region, um, especially for people who are really unfamiliar with St. Louis. We wanted to give you just a good kind of overview of what this region is like. Um, and then we will dive into our panel conversation. So if you have any kind of questions throughout the session today, please feel free to throw them in the Q&A, um, specifically the Q&A, not the chat, um, and we will try to answer as we go along. I'll try to jump in there if I can. Panelists, if you see questions that you can answer, feel free to do that. Um, we also might save some questions for the end to do um, to answer live for everyone. So please throw questions in the chat as you have or in the Q&A as you have them. And I think that's it for logistics. So I will go ahead and start here. So we have a really wonderful panel with us today. Um, we have Brown School staff, Washington University staff, um, current students, and like I said, an alum as well. So panel, I would love to just kind of dive in and have everyone introduce themselves. Um, if you could all share your name, your pronouns, your role at the Brown School at WashU, and then share also how long you've lived in St. Louis. And then I thought it would also be fun just to kind of share your favorite thing about St. Louis to get us started with the topic today. Um, so we'll start with our current students, Lauren and Felicity. Would you all like to go? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren. I um, am a student here at WashU. I'm a social work student. It's my first year. So I moved here in August and my favorite thing about St. Louis would definitely be Forest Park or just the wonderful green spaces that we have in the area. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Felicity. I use she, they pronouns. I'm a first year MSW student, a student ambassador um, at the admissions office. I'm also the international student representative <clears throat> for our student coordinating council. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm cracking up. Um, I, my favorite place uh, in St. Louis is definitely Jazz St. Louis. Um, it's such a lovely spot. It's a very private and intimate venue and students can get like a discounted $10 tickets and they have great artists. So um, that's my favorite. I love that, Felicity. I love Jazz St. Louis, and I also love Forest Park, Lauren. Great choices. Um, and now we will jump over to our staff. Um, Barbara, Mike, and Lewis, would you all like to introduce yourselves? Sure, I can, I can get started. Hi, Mike. Hi, Lewis. Hi, everybody. Um, Barbara Levin. I'm a teaching professor with the Office of Field Education. I also um, work with our social impact leadership students, concentration students, and share our domestic SED, social and economic development students. I teach community development and have taught a variety of other things um, in the domestic community development arena. Um, I love Forest Park. I have season tickets to jazz at the bistro. We don't get them for $10, unfortunately, so take advantage. They have world-renowned people there. Um, I think from my perspective, what I, um, I've been here since 1993, never thought I'd be here more than five years. And I've been at the Brown School for, um, since 2002 and started as staff and now professor. Um, I think one of my favorite things is because from my perspective, um, I love our neighborhoods. We have 79 neighborhoods in the city of St. Louis, and then you have 
90 municipalities in the county, not the same thing and separate. And um, I think I love our neighborhoods. And from a community development perspective, it's a very positive thing. And there's a lot of really exciting things happening. Um, it can be seen both positive and negative, but I am excited about the energy. I live in the city and I'm excited about some of the new things that are happening in the city and that energy. So I am optimistic. And the narrative about St. Louis is all narrative. It's not anywhere close to what it is. And our metropolitan area, I will add that, so. Well, I'll go next. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Jones. I use he, him pronouns. Excited to be with you all this afternoon, particularly our international students um, who are logged in. I don't know what time of day or night it is, but I appreciate you all for logging in and to hear from us and these colleagues today. So I'm a native St. Louis, and I get the pleasure of working at the Brown School of Social Work as an associate director for community science, leading research initiatives at the Race and Opportunity Lab, where we study black males within the St. Louis region, both city and county. And I also get the pleasure of serving in the Brown School as also as a, as a community partner and adding that lens and perspective as a, as a St. Louisan as well. And what I'm excited about in particular is St. Louis outside of Emo's Pizza, which is the best pizza in the world. I'm gonna say that one more time, Emo's Pizza. Write it down so when you get to St. Louis, that's the first thing you need to try. But outside of Emo's Pizza, what I would say about St. Louis is St. Louisians is our pride. Um, it'll take you just about two years to figure out the whole city county landscape. You'll figure that out maybe by the time you graduate. But the communal pride is something that's very unique about St. Louis that you will walk away with as a Brown School student. Uh, my name is Louis Demonia Jones. Uh, I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm also the alum that was referenced. So I am a recent alum from the Brown School. Uh, my role currently is as a voter engagement coordinator at the Gephardt Institute for Civic and Community Engagement, which is kind of an office in at WashU that helps to coordinate and work with our voter registration outreach efforts, uh, et cetera. Uh, I've lived in St. Louis area since I was like one years old. Um, so I've been here for a while in all different areas in the Metro East region, which you'll learn more about that later, uh, in Northside and uh, off Del Mar. So I've lived in different areas uh, and have diverse experience with that. If I had to give a recommendation, very tough, um, but this is something out in the county. There's a place called Lone Elk Park. We have a lot of parks, both in the county and uh, there's parks, you know, locally, obviously Forest Park is massive, but definitely go out and check out the parks. Lone Elk Park is my absolute favorite because you can actually see bison and elk roaming around. It's a very unique thing and I always recommend it. So Lone Elk Park uh, is my recommendation. I love that. Um, I went there for the, I've lived in St. Louis most of my life and I went there for the first time last year and it is really cool. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, thank you all. And now um, I would love to introduce and have him introduce himself, um, our facilitator for the day, um, Josh. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Josh Walewa. I use he, him pronouns. I am the Assistant Dean of Student Affairs at the Brown School. Um, so in, in that role, I, I work with our faculty and staff um, just to support the student experience in and out of the classroom. Excited to be here on this conversation. I want to uh, join Mike in, in excitement from seeing people from all over the region and all over the world. Um, I, while I was, I was born in Uganda, I know we have at least one attendee who's in Uganda right now um, and grew up in Southern California. So shout out to Uganda and to California, but every other place is good too. Just, um, just have a little love for those two places. Um, but I've been in St. Louis since 2003, where I started at Washington University working with undergrads. I've been back and forth at Washington University since 2003. Um, and so this is now my probably seventh year at the Brown School and probably my 12th or 13th year with the university total. As far as favorites about St. Louis, I've never been to Lone Elk Park, so I have to put that on the list. That sounds super exciting and the outdoor life is really good. I, I would just say in general, um, I raised a kid here, he's a college student and you know, it, it, it was a perfect place to, to raise, uh, to have a family. Um, it is inexpensive, but you have all the amenities of um, big city living. Um, and depending on where you're from around the world, um, there you go, Peter, shout out to Peter. 
uh, depending on uh, where, you, where you live around the country or around the world. Um, you know, we have all the pluses and minuses of a big city, but I think we just are more accessible uh, because of, of the big city amenities, but you get access to great, um, you know, Broadway shows, to the arts, to sp professional sports. Um, and then we have a lot of free things, disturbingly, uncomfortably free, like free, free, like to show up and you get to do things for free here, which is, which is a really cool feature for, for graduate students as you're considering your overall cost of attendance. Um, but uh, when you can bear yourself from outside of the books and research, you can actually do stuff that's not going to cost you a whole lot of money. Um, so with that being said, Shana, should I jump right into uh, kind of our, our afternoon? That sounds great. Yep, I will move the slide here. Excellent. And I, I'm noticing some chatter on the, in the chat around Emo's Pizza. Um, and Mike, I appreciate your enthusiasm. And Louis, I'm not sure you've been here for a long time. I happen to be a fan of Emo's. It is an acquired taste, though. I will say that some people from the East Coast and other places where they serve pizza will argue with you all day long on whether Emo's is pizza or not. I would say it is pizza, it is good, and there are a lot of other options of really good styles of pizza, including New Jersey East Coast style pizza. I, if you need to know, I'm sure a bunch of us can give you some recommendations. St. Louis is very much a foodie town. So we're here to talk about why St. Louis matters and why um, choosing to study and work and live in St. Louis matters. And, and what we believe, I, what I believe for sure is that where you choose to do your graduate studies is gonna be really important. Whether you're from St. Louis or you're from outside of this area, it's a great city that has a lot of challenges, but it has plenty of opportunities where you can actually be a contribution. You can actually make a difference. There's some places where it's really difficult to break in. This is a place where you can actually put those things into practice and see real change at the individual and systemic level. Um, and so we focus on micro, meso, macro work. Um, of course, the Brown School is a place where you can study social work, pol uh, social policy, and public health. And we seek to advance social, economic, health, environmental, and racial justice. Um, and so, again, we work not just in St. Louis, but we more so are with St. Louis. And, and for some of you, St. Louis can be home, like it has been for me since 2003. And for Barbara, it's like she's been here since 1993. However, we have plenty of alumni who go back to their hometowns and countries. And so don't be afraid that it's a trap. It's just a great place where, you, again, you can make a big difference. Um, so we want to kind of give you um, a brief overview of our kind of social health and political um, indicators of St. Louis versus St. Louis, Missouri overall. So on the next slide we have here, um, we have some pretty good information for you. All right, so our population totals as shared before, it's real interesting. So in the state of Missouri, we have 6.2 million people, but we have a little over 300,000 people in this city of St. Louis, the proper city proper, which is where Barbara mentioned she lives. I live in St. Louis city. And so we'll kind of delineate that for you as well. You can see our, our breakdown of our primary English speakers um, high school graduates, uh, people in poverty at 20%, um, health insurance rates, of course, are, are, and our leading cause of death is both locally and statewide heart disease. Um, the way our, our electoral map kind of breaks out is a little interesting in the city, uh, maybe not as surprising to folks, but in the city, we're 82.3% Democrat versus 16.1% Republican, whereas statewide, it flips to 41.4 and 56.8% respectively. And then as far as our non-white resident breakdown, we'll kind of give you a breakdown of um, ethnically next, but uh, racially next, but we have 55.3% um, non-white residents within the city of St. Louis and 20.9% overall statewide. This next slide does talk about a little bit more of a breakdown of um, by race and ethnicity. So white, we have 44% uh, here in St. Louis city. Black or African-American, we're at 45.3% compared to 11.8% statewide. Uh, AIAN, we have 0.3% here in the city and 0.6% in the state. Um, Asian descent, we have 3.6% compared to 2.2% in the state. Uh, Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander, 0.1% and 0.2% respectively. And then two or more races, we have 2.6% and 2.4%. And then Hispanic Latino, 4.2%, 4.4%. But I will say this, um, just to... There's a lot of information, some pretty good literature out there about St. Louis being a city founded and based on immigrants um, from, from all over the world. And um, it has a deep and rich history. And, and as I think Barbara mentioned this earlier about our neighborhoods, that's one of the great places um, where you can really explore kind of the rich culture and fabric of our, of our community. And so again, hopefully our panelists will share their experiences with that as well.
Great, thanks, Josh. Um, we wanted to share this map here um, because St. Louis is a huge region. So a couple of people have talked about that already. Um, this kind of shows the city of St. Louis, which is um, highlighted in the dark gray. That's the actual city outline. And then the rest of the map kind of shows the bigger St. Louis region. And it's even bigger than this. Um, extends to the west into Missouri and then to the east into Illinois. I'm actually, I realized I didn't um, really share much about myself, but I'm actually from um, the greater St. Louis region over on the east side in, in Illinois. So been here a really long time as well. Um, and I really like this, this map because it shows that St. Louis really is a city of neighborhoods. Barbara, I think you mentioned that already. We have 79 neighborhoods in the city of St. Louis. All of them are really distinct. All of them, um, you know, have their own history, have their own culture. Um, Josh mentioned that we're, this is a region of immigrants, like a lot of different cultures here. So, um, you know, some, some neighborhoods are, are really thriving and built up and then some are still developing and kind of recovering from um, honestly, like decades of policies that have led to economic depression. And, you know, a lot of the neighborhoods are kind of somewhere in the middle. So this is just, um, I think a really cool map. And then on the next slide, um, we'll talk about kind of where the Brown School and WashU are um, in, in location. So, um, like I said, like you can see, we'll start with the Brown School right down here um, in the bottom left corner. You can see like we're, we're right on the edge, right on the edge of the city and the county. Um, so this is a, a really, um, I think a really cool place, a really unique place to, to be. We're kind of in the center of everything here. Um, we're right next to Forest Park, which is that that really big rectangle there. A couple of people have mentioned Forest Park is their favorite place in, in the city. I would have to agree with that. I love Forest Park. I live in the city too um, and live right on the edge of the park. Um, and then kind of on the other end of the park, we have the WashU School of Medicine. So the, the main campus at WashU where the Brown School is located and then the medical campus, we kind of bookend Forest Park here. Um, Forest Park is, I think it's about six miles um, the whole perimeter around the park is about six miles, just to kind of give you an idea of, um, of that geographic space. Absolutely, and, and I would add, um, it's bigger than Central Park. There we go, bigger than Central yeah. Park. Yeah. Big bragging part, and when I mentioned all the free stuff, there's, you know, a lot of really cool things, concerts, um, a free zoo, free museums, um, a lot of really, really great things, and it's, it, the university itself is, you know, as, as Shana mentioned, it's, if you can, there's certain parts where you can stand in the university where you're in county or when you're in city, where in your university city, you're in St. Louis city. It's really an interesting, uniquely kind of just by the main Danforth campus. But then again, we have the medical campus and West campus and some other areas as well. And the other thing I want to mention about our overall region, you know, for many of you who are coming from areas that are kind of cobblestone with all the counties together, um, you'll notice that we'll have in the St. Louis region, you know, we have places like, you know, um, Maplewood and Richmond Heights and, and uh, you know, I don't know, you, as far as St. Charles, I'll just say. Um, those aren't considered part of the St. Louis city, but you know, the overall population tends to be a lot larger than, it doesn't feel like 300,000 people. It, it feels a lot larger as, as far as how continuous the region feels when you, when you flow on out. But again, we'll, we're going to focus our conversation around, around St. Louis and, and the region. Well, I think, is it time for us to jump into the panel discussion? I think it is. Let's jump right in. Let's do it. So we do have a, a few questions for our panelists. And so I'm going to kind of lead us off here with these questions. And, and then at the very end, we'll, we'll make sure that we get some Q&A from our, our live audience, um, whether you put it in the chat feature that, or I'm sorry, in the uh, questions feature, I think that, that Shana mentioned earlier. But so I'll, I'll kick this off. Maybe Barbara, you can start us off with this one, and then we can go to the rest of our panelists. Um, how are the Brown School and Washington University uh, engaging uh, in the St. Louis community? Um, okay, I just realized that I was putting things in the chat and it's only seen by panelists. So I will stop doing that and maybe say some of the things I meant to say. So that's okay. Um, so the most important way in which we're engaged in the St. Louis community is that every single um, MSW student, um, public health student, and policy student must do practical, uh, not an internship, but practical in the region. Um, you have some options of doing it in the region in St. Louis City and also internationally in a variety of places in between. 
Okay, majority Barbara. of people, especially with MSW, do them locally. Um, we've been writing. Barbara, yeah. sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. I think the way you, I know you're on loaner computer. I think the, yeah, the volume is cutting in and out. Oh, okay. Well, I'm using yeah. a, an admissions uh, an admissions office uh, laptop. So well, yeah, I'm trying to save my battery. <laughs> I have a class at one o'clock, so I'm trying to talk fast. So, okay. um, so what I started to say is everybody does practicum. Um, everybody does some level of field education engagement uh, with an affiliated field site. It could be nonprofit, public, private, um, a variety of different kinds of sites, um, but everybody does something. And so you will be here for school and you will also be, um, um, in the community doing um, field education. Um, again, you all know that as practicum students. Um, the other way is as volunteers and as part-time people work part-time or full-time for many um, of our nonprofits and for-profit places. So um, people are engaged in a variety of ways as volunteers, as uh, professionals and through the Brown School. There are a number of classes that also engage with the community. So uh, there are ways in which you might be in a class like one of mine, where we partner with community leaders, neighborhood leaders, and we work in the neighborhoods. Um, Mike, uh, Mike uh, hosted uh, my class, uh, Mike and his uh, father and their church hosted our class last semester. And so that's an example. We were out in the community um, and really tried to um, uh, practice the, um, the perspective of it is about resident voice and it is about um, uh, community development at the centered with the with the resident leaders. I think that's pretty much my answer. Uh, maybe other ways, but that's pretty much my answer. Yeah, that's great, Barbara. I appreciate that. Um, I'd love to get a, a feel from the students, but Mike and Lewis, do you have anything to add? I'll add also that Brown School has some world-renowned faculty members who are doing amazing work. And that's ways that you can stay engaged in the community as well. Um, the role that I do specifically works with community science, where we're looking at the data and how really the community voice has a place at the table. And so every research project that we're engaged in, um, we're, we like to ensure that the community has a voice at the table, making sure that we're just not going into a community to collect data and do research, but make sure that the community has a say in every single thing we do. And so that's one of the positives of working at the Brown School with world-renowned faculty members as well. Just a quick uh, quick note, although we want to get to the students. Uh, so I'm at the, grad, the Gephardt Institute for Civic and Community Engagement, so very relevant. And one of the awesome opportunities that we developed this past year, which if you come to the Brown School, you'll be able to take part in, is the Graduate Impact Forum, where we help students who may be new to the St. Louis area, graduate students, to meet graduate students from across the university, hear from community leaders, hear about community topics, and learn how to get engaged in the community civically and through community service opportunities. So you may be like, oh, how do I get involved in all the great stuff I think is happening? We have a place and there's many other resources that are here that you can engage with. So you'll have a place to start. So uh, we have some great ways that you can start to engage in the St. Louis community here. That sounds really exciting. I appreciate that. Felicity, Lauren, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, um, I can go first. I would say um, if you have like a strong desire to um, engage in the community, they're just, as Lewis said, there are just so many um, opportunities that the Brown School is providing. But even if, you're the kind of people who are like on the quieter side, you don't really know how to reach out to people. All of these classes, they will push you to engage with the community. Like this semester, I'm taking a class um, in system dynamics and we're partnering with like local sponsors from um, local institutions and organizations. And we're applying what we're learning in class to help the different local organizations um, to reach their goals. So I think that's like something that Brown School values, um, engaging with our community. Yeah, Lauren. Yeah, I would definitely second that. That's such a great point. Um, sometimes like for me being new to the area, I was very much like Lucy said, not sure how to begin like this process of engagement. And my classes definitely encouraged me and like my professors, um, 
really gave us the tools to say like, okay, go out and find someone to interview for like this assignment. And then in, in that process, I learned a lot about the community and about the different opportunities in the community or ways to get involved. Um, but even just like going into your professor's like um, office hours or talking to them after class, like they have this huge wealth of knowledge that they're more than happy to share. Thank you, Lauren. You know, while I still have you um, on the call, it looks like you're calling in from a classroom. Is that right? Actually, I'm from the, I'm at the Office of Admissions. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm a student ambassador and I work at the Office of Admissions and I'm just in one of our office spaces. Excellent. Well, so you, you, you're in a perfect spot to talk about this. I just noticed the whiteboard because I think of all the whiteboards and electronics and stuff around campus and it's a beautiful space to work at. Um, if you could, Lauren, if you could answer this question as far as um, this next question, which is, um, what do you see as a primary um, social health or policy challenge in the St. Louis area? I know that you are, it sounds like you're starting to connect with some of these topics in, in the field. And so um, from a student perspective, how do you see students working towards addressing uh, some of these primary issues? Yeah, that's a, a wonderful question. Um, I think we talk a lot about different um, issues, not only in like society, but like specific to the St. Louis area. And there's a lot, <laughs> but one thing that comes to mind, um, interestingly enough, um, I know we have Lewis on the call and I, I was thinking about voting rights. And um, it's, I think it's funny that I, I I like lean towards that because I was never really super interested in policy, like I'm more interested in direct work, but after taking multiple policy courses, like it's something I'm passionate about. I just don't know how I'm gonna connect it all at the moment. Um, but yeah, we have like these great organizations that um, we can take part in to, you know, help with advocacy and um, just like greater knowledge of what's going on, what are the current policies in our area and how we can work towards educating and helping erase those barriers to voting rights or to like access to vote. You know, you know, I think your experience is very similar to a lot of people when they go to graduate school. You come in with an idea of a certain range of things you're interested in, but it expands based on the context. And I think that, that your, your example is a great one. Barbara, do you have any thoughts on this one as well? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, um, I think one of the things that differentiates us from some of the other social work programs and or other schools in general is that we really do have a system, a systems approach, uh, person and environment as well as a systems approach. And so whatever policy challenges, social policy challenges that may exist, we really look at not just one, but how each issue impacts each other. And one change has unintended consequences and intended consequences. Um, I would say that probably um, most would identify that our, the racist policies, as well as the racism in our, in our, in our area, not different from other places, frankly, but, but seems to be um, much more prominent and talked about and different uh, on some levels in other places, much more apparent. And so I think that our uh, focus and our thoughts and our training and practice around talking, dealing, understanding that impact on a systems level, on a micro level, one-to-one, -one, neighbor to neighbor, community to community, organizationally, structurally policy, all of those things together, I think is probably um, one of the issues that I, I do believe that the Brown School students address on a regular basis. Um, uh, yeah. That's great. I appreciate that perspective, Barbara. I just want to take a, a pause here and, and kind of acknowledge Felicity shared in the chat. If you could make sure you put your questions in the Q&A portion, we promise to get that at the very end of this panel after we get through a couple of questions. We appreciate them, keep coming them in, keep, keep them coming, but just uh, put them in the Q&A section. 
So I want to open up this question to the rest of our panelists, you know, um, if you all want to address this part of the primary social health or policy challenges in St. Louis area and how students can address it. Who would like to, to jump in? I can uh, take a stab at it. Um, <laughs> there, are, like, like was mentioned earlier, there's so many questions that can be approached, but I think St. Louis uh, at this place of intersection, very much so an intersection of East and West, North and South, I mean, it's just an intersection point. Um, and I think our neighborhoods also, there are places where you see what we can call uneven development. You see opportunities where, you see areas of opportunity where you see exponential growth, um, amenities, et cetera, and you have regions that aren't seeing that. And I think there's a lot of people asking the question, how can we change that? How can we create growth for all? And how also, you know, there's also great work being done at some research centers around how you build wealth amongst communities that have, that have been disenfranchised from wealth. And I think that's an opportunity for students who are interested um, in social policy, public health, social work to think about how do we start to build wealth for those who have been left out of the wealth building system? How do we build communities, um, self-sustaining and sustainable communities that are growing, that are thriving, um, and that are growing again at the same pace as areas that may have more economic resources there. So there's a lot of questions here in St. Louis um, that are ripe for solutions. So uh, if you're coming here, definitely, uh, I think there's a lot of room for research on these topics. Thank you, that's, that's fantastic. And I don't know if Mike and Felicity, if you wanna add anything. Felicity, would you like to go? Oh, no, I was busy um, monitoring the chat, I'm sorry. Do you wanna jump in or do you want me to go? <laughs> sure, as, as already, as already mentioned, um, there's a lot of things historically that make St. Louis a right place um, for, for students to come and study. When you, the thing that comes to mind and it was already mentioned by Barbara is um, really the history of segregation. Um, it's not unique to St. Louis, but when you look at the historical trends of segregation, whether you're talking about Shelley versus Kramer, redlining, a lot of that history um, has its foundation here in St. Louis. And I would also say a lot of the policy, a lot of that, that has gone into really um, breaking down these, these, these trends over time has had a brown student imprint in it over, over, over the generations. And so you cannot maneuver in St. Louis or go too far without finding a brown school alum or somebody who's connected with the brown school community in terms of making some inactive changes with a lot of the policies that are going on. So this is a ripe time, a ripe place to really get connected with the issues and, and, and get on and hit the ground running. St. Louis, big town, meaning you can literally get to Ferguson, Missouri in 10 minutes from where we are on campus, right? And so you can get anywhere with, within a short amount of time. So if you wanna get involved and get entrenched in the work, there's opportunities to do that. Thank you, appreciate it. Felicity, do you wanna add anything else? Yeah, we just second what Mike has just shared. I feel like the impact of segregation seeps into everything that we do. Even I am a mental health concentration student and like from the surface, it would seem like I'm only working with individual clients and that's not gonna be something that would impact my work. But right now I am um, working with um, families with childhood obesity issues in rural St. Louis area. And um, you can see how just like obesity disproportionately affect um, black families. And um, that's something that we need to address even in like a counseling and therapy setting as well. It's not something that is macro, like even a micro setting, um, racial equity and the impact of segregation are something to be considered. And I think St. Louis is a great place to ponder um, the impact of all of these issues. We give a great point about the connectedness. And I think that's been alluded to here in this conversation as well, of all these issues and how the one impacts all. I think we have one more question here before we head to the audience questions. I think the next one up is, why is St. Louis an asset when choosing to study social work, public health, 
and social policy. Love to kind of get anybody's perspective on that. Barbara, please. Yeah, I have a class at one o'clock and my students are starting to come in early. So I want to just, can I have a minute? Just one second. So I just want to answer this question and then I, I need to get off the call or else I'll just have to keep telling them not to talk and I don't like doing that. So uh, real quick, I think uh, the biggest asset is our accessibility to leaders and to um, the folks who can really make a difference. Uh, we are the big kahuna in town. Um, so um, we bring with it a lot of responsibility, a lot of um, a lot of what's the word history that's not always positive. But you can go down the street to a coffee shop, and you might run into the CEO of the largest nonprofit in the community, the chancellor, um, students, all kinds of people, and you will soon see them on a regular basis. We're a small town with a lot of assets and you can make an impact easily. And I think that that's, you know, students who wanna move back to Chicago and realize you can go to Chicago, but you're not gonna be able to like pick up the phone and make an appointment with the mayor. You can do that here. Our current mayor is, is very supportive of social work. She would pick up the phone, she, not the phone, but a, we can get you an appointment, the county exec. Um, so I think that that wouldn't happen in some of the bigger and the bigger um, metropolitan areas. Um, that said, you have to be careful because, you know, you have to, you know, uh, people know you and remember you. And so it's always a, a, a thing to remain positive, uh, positive reputation. But I think that that's always what I say is the biggest asset um, is our accessibility to people and to leadership and to change. And I think a lot of people talk, asked in the chat places that students have made a difference. And they certainly have in the community development world, I'll go to a meeting now and here's a, an arena, a profession that is not dominated by social work. It is not dominated by any one profession, but we are more in the room than any place else, than any other group. And it's, it's a source of pride for me and we are making a difference. And so that's something that is very palatable and visible. So I, I need to jump off, but um, Shana has my information and there are some questions about practicum that I'm happy to answer. So Shana, if you want to send anyone to me, I'm okay with that. Thank you, Barbara. Appreciate it. And we appreciate the energy of your classes. See, even learning at the Brown School is fun. Um, yeah, it's a meeting management class. So I have to get off so I can manage my meeting. And right. I have a guest coming who has just been uh, promoted to the Vice President of Equitable Economic Impact at the Cortex STL, Natalie Self. And she has an amazing bio and an amazing person and a practicum site. So this whole social entrepreneurship piece, entrepreneurship startup economic impact is, is in our is in our room. <laughs> so we're gonna have to get to you, you later. to go to talk about that. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for your time. Sure. Uh, I want to send it to the rest of our panelists too. You know, again, thinking about St. Louis as a place as an asset for uh, studying social work, social policy, and, and Public health. I'd love to get your take on that as well. I want to highlight again the fact that St. Louis is in the intersections. Um, for those who may not you know, be from the United States, or this may be their first time, or um, they may have heard about New York, or they may have heard about you know LA. Um, but here in the kind of heartland, as it's as they call it, you're kind of at the intersection of so many different places. You're very close to Chicago, but you're really in a, in a unique Midwestern context. And I think again. All the issues that we've talked about are not unique to St. Louis, but they're highlighted in St. Louis in a very unique fashion to the point where it helps, it helps to conceptualize the story really of the United States um, here in St. Louis. And so it's an opportunity, I think, to engage in kind of this new, very interesting way. Obviously, we have a history too connected to the Ferguson, up, Ferguson uprising of, of activism. And so there's a lot of ways to get practically involved here and research that also is involved, you know, is, is practice oriented is also kind of, I think, in the spirit of St. Louis here. So there's a lot of assets, but I think definitely that uh, understanding your, your kind of geolocation is something that's, that could be an asset and, and something that could be an opportunity for research. Thank you. Lauren, Felicity, Mike, any thoughts about this last one before we move to the audience questions? Yes, I think um, like many of the other panelists mentioned, there's, 
there's so much opportunity and there's just with with a lot of problems comes a lot of opportunities and so like we had mentioned um i think there's so many different organizations or um individuals that want to make change and are dedicated to being in the community of St. Louis, that it is almost easy to find places to, but like suit your interests. And so like in looking for a practicum site and in thinking about future employment, there's just, there's so much opportunity and there's a lot of people in the community that care about the community. I would completely agree. And I'll just add this, this, this final point to St. Louis. We are an underrated philanthropic city in terms of our per capita. And so you have any initiative that you can think of or that you can dream up. It's, we are a city who supports our initiative, supports our nonprofit. And so this is a space in a place where if you have a passion for something, you can come to Wash U and find any student organization I get, I guarantee can match that passion and students around. But the philanthropic um, wing of our city is highly underrated in terms of our giving back to the important causes that we um, care about. Absolutely, Felicity, any, any closing thoughts before we move to the audience questions? I don't think I have anything else to add. I just mentioned that I really appreciate how WashU has such a good relationship um, or partnership with St. Louis. Um, so like being a Brown student, you have really good reputation um, in the community where in St. Louis as a whole and um, just very, you're welcome in like all the places. And I think that's um, a very a huge advantage um, of being both being St. Louis and being at the Brown School. Thank you for that. So Shana, I think we're you and I are gonna lob some some audience questions here. It looks like some of them have been answered. We might want to get some other takes on those as well. Um, how do you want to handle this? Yeah, I'll yeah, everyone has answered so many questions live. So I really appreciate everyone jumping in there. Uh, we did have a few pre-submitted questions, from people registered. So I wanted to um, go through a couple of those that especially the ones that were relevant to just living and working in St. Louis. Um, so someone asked just pretty simply, how do I excel in St. Louis? <laughs> so any advice from the panelists for an incoming student who is potentially completely new to the city on how they can excel here? I'll, I'll go ahead. I, as a student who, I had never been to the Midwest before moving here in August, I got accepted to Wash U and I didn't really have the opportunity to come and tour or like visit beforehand. So it was kind of a, a like a leap of faith. Um, and I absolutely love it here. And I think part of it or a huge part of it is the people like the community, the people in St. Louis are so willing to mentor you, to help you, to just like be there for you. And I would highly recommend that when you come or if you come, you lean into that. When people say like, oh yeah, I'm here if you have questions or like, come like reach out to me, like do it, take that, take that as a, an honest and open, sincere invitation. And uh, it just opens up a, a whole bunch of doors and opportunities for you to find your place and also like do the work that you wanna do here. Does anyone else want to speak to any advice on how to excel in St. Louis? I would say definitely. Oh, no, is Mike. Are you going to oh, go, Mike? I was, gonna, I was, I was going to say, oh, like, definitely go out. Like, take this as an opportunity to go outside of your comfort zone. Because, you know, with like with anything, you know, you can kind of get into a rhythm. You can have there's a great community at Washington University. So there's like a plethora of things to do here and, and on campus and with campus partners. But challenge yourself and, and find ways to explore both academically, both academic, like research wise, like send an email to like, let's say you just go on the research centers and you're like, oh, this sounds like an awesome 
I am telling my own story. This sounds like an awesome initiative. I'll send an email to this researcher and then literally I, I have a meeting with them and they're saying, you wanna be a research assistant. Like, so explore and take those opportunities um, both on campus and off campus. You know, definitely travel to different parts of St. Louis, different parts of Missouri, different parts of Illinois. Um, and yeah, let this be an exploratory time because sometimes your interests will change and that's a good thing. You'll grow, you'll have expansion. Um, and I think those give you opportunities for that expansion. So I think that's a great way to be successful. Mike, did you want to say something? Oh, Lewis sell it, said it so eloquently. Yeah. <laughs> we have nothing else to add to that. But we, have, we, have a, we do have a washu bubble that we like to call it, right? Step outside the washu bubble, as Lewis said. I would completely echo that. Um, there's, and Josh mentioned at the beginning, there's so much free stuff to do. It's, it's like, I cannot um, emphasize that enough, <laughs> um, especially once we get into like nicer weather. Um, there's so many festivals that are going on and just, you know, there's a lot of like um, neighborhood pride around this region. And so you'll find opportunities to do like an international festival or, um, you know, some kind of like performing arts, um, festival so there's there's just like a ton of opportunities and I completely would echo what Mike said about getting outside of the wash you bubble um you know being in the bubble can um give you a lot of great opportunities for networking and making connections and then like once you get out of it there's even more there and you can really get a really good feel for um just kind of the flavor of this region um, we had another question pre-submitted um, and this student or this um, audience member asked, what organizations does WashU work with in the community? What do opportunities for involvement look like for students? So I'm um, wondering if anyone can speak kind of specifically to anything that they're involved with or um, if they're, um, you know, having students being involved in any kind of research or um, community engagement. I don't want to take up too much space here on this uh, on this here panel, but I actually had a really exciting opportunity um, as a student at the Brown School as an MSW student in a class with an awesome professor that you have to have, Dr. Molly Metzger, and we were in collaboration with Webster Groves, which is a local regional government. Uh, it's a local city in the St. Louis County. Um, we were able to work with their city council to actually film a media project on community land trusts, and so it, that was a great way that to, that, that we partnered with actually a local government and a, a community organizations to kind of create something that now is like on their website and like it's on website for a center for social development. And so it was a great partnership between community partners, coursework, research. It was a great intersection. We got personal skill building and there's so many classes where that's that community engaged teaching, community engaged learning is exactly how professors go about it very organically. Again, you're getting to meet city council people and you're getting to interact with business leaders and, and have conversations, community leaders, um, from all different stripes. So that was a great experience of partnership um, that I got to be a part of. Anyone else? Um, Mike, I don't want to put you on the spot, but... <laughs> I will say from a personal note, um, I actually, um, I've only been at the Brown School since August, and I actually came um, from a local organization, um, nonprofit organization here in St. Louis serving youth, um, and I know that um, I was there for a number of years, and the Brown School um, and the organization, the part that Mike works with, um, did quite a bit of work um, with the organization that I worked with um doing research and just kind of like helping my organization design our programs around um positive creating positive um outcomes for um black male youth in our community and that was I was always so impressed by the work that the Brown School was doing which is part of the reason I came here so um that's just one other example of some specific work that that the Brown School does with our community yeah so one of the ways that that you can get involved. And I know this kind of tailors into some of the opportunities that we have for research assistance. Um, is you can get involved in a research lab um, where we can 
one of our initiatives through the Race and Opportunity Lab is our preferred provider network, where we bring together all of the organizations who service Black youth within the St. Louis region, and we establish standards. And it's a, a standards for how to serve Black males within the region. And some of the organizations that are involved with this is Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Places for People, Williams and Associates, um, just to name a few. But it's just an opportunity to seek to establish a table where a community of individuals who are passionate about the same um, infrastructure to really come together and serve youth within the region. So, you know, there were there were a couple of questions that kind of overlap both in um, being submitted prior to our time together. I know we're not going to be able to get to everything, but. Some of the questions are around some other experiential things like international work, working with you know um, people who do public health work internationally. And so, you know, Mike mentioned you know of course working in research centers, and, and we have iChat, Smart Africa, and some other organizations internally within the Brown School. And so I do hope that you take some time to check check out our website and take a look at some of the international work that they're doing there. As far as prison education or prison health outcomes, um, I'm. I'm not sure about health outcomes necessarily in prison, but we do have a prison education program that's that's uh, located at the university. And so I encourage you all to take a look at that if you're interested in, in mass incarceration and addressing some needs there. And then there were some career focused questions about like, OK, after St. Louis, I don't leverage out of that. And I'll say the short answer to that is um, our, our students in social work and public health um, you know, do everything and anything in between. I mean, we have, we have them working in Capitol Hill to do research. Uh, we have students who are obviously, uh, you know, we have a good amount of students who decide to stay and commit to the St. Louis area for a number of years before they move back or move on to, to wherever they move to. And so there, there are plenty of opportunities to do, to do work on a micro, meso, and, and macro level. And if you go to the Brown School website and search career outcomes, you can see a report from 2019, 2018, 2019, I believe, we should get to 1921 pretty soon, but you can get a, a range of organizations like Centene to um, the CDC, um, a, a, just a wide range of organizations um, where people are doing, doing work um, for social or public health and social policy. So I wanted to get to those. Thank you, Shana. We are getting, we do have a few questions about um, public health opportunities, um, any kind of organizations um, that public health students can, can work with or do, you know, research with or partnership with. As Josh mentioned, we have a number of research centers that are part of the Brown School. You can find information about all of those on the Brown School website. I think there's like 20 plus, <laughs> many of them are, <laughs> there's a lot. Um, so many of them are focused on public health. Um, there's a number of, you know, huge hospital systems in St. Louis, um, <laughs> one of them being connected with WashU, which is the um, Washington University School of Medicine. Um, Children's Hospital is also connected to that campus. So there are, there are a number of different hospitals um, where I know students do, um, you know, practicum work and research work too. Sorry, I'm just trying, I'm reading, there's a lot of questions. Yeah, I'm, there's a question here. I'm thinking, I know there's so many, and again, we're, we're running low on time. I, I'd love to maybe get um, our panelists' response to, to this one. So this one's, you know, how, how are students connecting their, like, for, for Lauren and Felicity, how are you thinking about connecting your current experiences towards that next step? Because, you know, there's one question kind of had language around finding the dream job. And, and, and I know that, you know, as we talk about careers, we talk about, you know, it's a lifespan. A career is a, a long time. If you're fortunate, you get to work for 30, 40, maybe 50 years for some people. And so there's a lot you can explore in this day and age. And you can have 10 different careers. But for Felicity and Lauren, like, you know, as you're thinking about your preparation for careers, from working here in St. Louis, how does that help? And identifying. And then from, of course, Mike and Lewis, I'd love to get your perspective on, you know, preparation from the Brown School and, and looking forward, um, tying in your, your local St. Louis experience towards something outside of the St. Louis region. Uh, 
So I don't have a set dream job in my head. Like, I don't know what my dream job would be. Um, I know after, after coming and like learning and being here, I know I'm in the right place and this is the right field. I don't have a specific idea of like, oh, I need to be doing this and this and this and this. To be honest, I have no idea. Like the more that I come and the more that I learn, things change. Like I was saying, I, I came in with not really an interest in policy and now I'm a little more open to that idea. Um, it, it changes for me. And I think being open and like learning and going out into the community and being a part of different um, organizations really has helped open my, my mind and also my heart to like what I want to do in the future. Um, definitely that work experience, um, being a part of different um, services or like, um, how do I say this? Like, yeah, organization really helps to show me the possibilities of what I want to do or what I don't want to do. Thank you, Lauren. Um, yeah, for me, I um, I came from China and I always um, thought of like going back to events like the mental health equity in China, um, but I don't really know um, like how to do it. I just have a very vague idea, but like seeing how mental health equity is being addressed in St. Louis um, definitely helped me see how I can like transfer this model to my own country. Um, and I think that's definitely something that I will take with me even after I go back to my home country. Um, yeah, it's like a little, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, can someone jump in? I'm with a loss of words. Yeah. I, I think I would say, and thank you both Lauren and Felicity for sharing, because I think the way you're describing it is exactly the way it should be, right? Um, some students come in with a track where they just know where they want to go, but most don't. And so I've seen the gamut within our research lab. I've seen students who come in with data analysis experience and just want to look at the data. And then I take them to a community meeting and where they start to do presentations and it shifts, right? And, and I've also had students who, who come in to be trained to train to be faculty or postdocs. And because of their engagement at the Brown School community, working within community, it changes what university that they go teach at, right? You may want to go to Boston or New York to serve a similar community makeup as, as the experiences that you got here. And so I would say as you're as you're here and you're thinking about career, um, test the waters, test the waters, join a research lab. Go, go find out all the cool things that are going on um, with that missions in the different community organizations, because that's the best way to get the most out of your experience. You just want to second that, Mike. That's such a good point, because I think a lot of people have the conception that passion or desire have to proceed, um, like whatever career you're pursuing. But a lot of times it's actually the doing and the action that proceeds. Um, and inspired you to develop a passion. So you don't have to like wait around and wait until you find your passion. You just have to do it. And St. Louis is like the perfect place. There's just so many things that you can, you know, test the waters and try out. And eventually you will find the exact thing that you want to do. Backed by the research and, and there's some pretty good research out there about how passion can grow from some unexpected places and you can find yourself doing something in your life that you never saw before. And so um, I think having a plan is definitely fine. It's maybe good for a lot of us, um, but being remaining open is even a better approach because you never know what you're going to find. Shanna, so it looks like we're, we're rapid, we're kind of closing down on time. I, I want to pass it on to you. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this. And, and I, again, you know, I know we, if folks need to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me through admissions and uh, be happy to continue these conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Josh, for facilitating. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're right at time. So um, thank you to all the panelists. This was such a great conversation. And um, I know that's what we are hoping for. Um, you know, knowing where you're potentially going to live for two or more years is a huge, um, a huge factor in making your graduate school decision. So um, I just really appreciate all of the um, input from all the panelists and 
Um, I think like my takeaway as a staff member hearing everything is um, there are a lot of opportunities here. You know, a lot of it is what you make of it, um, but there are, you know, so many people here to, to help you and to help guide you and connect you along the way. So, um, Shana, can I say one more thing before we close out? Yeah, of course, please. Thank you, our, thank you, our panelists. And, and to our, our folks who are viewing either the recording or watching live, you should go here. So just, just go ahead and make that <laughs> make that part of the equation really easy. And now uh, we look forward to seeing you in, in fall of 2022. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I second that. <laughs> um, all of our, my contact is up, information is here. Um, Admitted Students Week, for those of you who are admitted students, please join us. It's all virtual, April 5th through 8th. Lots of good content, much like this. Lots of panels um, where you can ask a question. So um, we would love to have you. Um, a lot of the professors that were named, they're going to be doing um, sessions. Mike is doing a session um, for us during Admitted Students Week. So I would love to have you there. Um, if you're still thinking of applying, we're still accepting applications on a rolling basis right now. So contact me, contact us, um, and we're happy to help with anything. So um, thank you all for joining us. If you're here live or watching us on the recording, and um, thank you again so much to our panelists and to Josh. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>